to the social branch. I'm super excited that for our guest today, we have Riley with nothing but the booth. I'm excited for you guys to hear her story. And honestly, she's kind of new to the entrepreneurial game and that's super exciting because I am too. So hopefully we'll have a little bit in common and I'm excited to start this conversation. All right, Riley, so how are you doing today? Good, how are you? I'm doing good. We're dealing with this cold weather, you know, it's just not unusual here in Florida. That's something we just don't do. Yeah, I had to break out my jacket, but I only have like two, so. <laughs> Are you, are you originally from Florida? From Miami originally. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. that's like... So from like South Florida where it's super hot. <laughs> yeah, my family's from Naples, so I can definitely like, yeah. I get that. It's just it's a total different world. Yeah. yeah it, gets, it gets a little chilly up here. It does. Compared. Yeah. My blood doesn't like it. <laughs> I moved up here when I was probably like in fifth grade, and I'm, oh, okay. I'm almost 30 now, so it's been a while. My parents were split, so I spent my summers in Miami until I was, you know, graduated from high school, which I loved, because being a kid here in Ocala sucks. Yeah, I probably was... <laughs> it probably was good. But I'm not originally from Ocala, I'm actually from Volusia County originally. Oh, cool. So um, I married Ocala, my wife's like been generationally from here, her grandmother's generationally from here, <laughs> so she's like Ocalian. Yeah. 100%. I'm not from Ocala, so I don't, you know, I came here I think my senior year of high school, so mm. it was kind of just a lot, a lot different. So Culture shock, almost. A little bit, yeah, I mean, it was actually kind of interesting because Ocala is not quite as mixed culturally mm -hmm. at least it wasn't when now it kind of is yeah but it was not that way when i first came here i got to see like slow cala and what slow cala is yeah. <laughs> now it's definitely not slow cala anymore. no traffic yeah. awful so you went to high school here i did i went to high school in citrus county so oh, over okay. from that side and just i'm so more from citrus county i guess oh, okay. but there's nothing to do in citrus county no that's that now that hasn't so, changed that much no so it was anytime you know we want to go to the mall or go to like a decent restaurant for dinner it was ocala so yeah. and of course if i talk to anyone else from anywhere if i say oh i'm from crystal river or citrus county they're like huh and at least more people have heard of ocala because they're a little bit more on the map <laughs> than citrus well county. i mean the thing is, is you have to kind of drive through ocala too yeah, yeah. anywhere on 75 exactly. people have seen the name even though they don't ever say it right like, no like Ocala. yeah ocala. <laughs> company it's called nothing but the booth I ran into the idea basically from a Facebook ad and Facebook ads are normally super annoying and I ignore them but I just happened to see it pop up on my newsfeed one day and I was like what is this this is really interesting it's really cool to look at it's sleek and so I looked into the company and I saw what it was and it's it's a company that sells photo booths it's called photo booths with Lyco and they sell three different kinds of photo booths all different price ranges and the thing that I liked about this company was that they didn't just sell you the photo booth and just be like, good luck, you know, you're on your own, kid. They sold you the photo booth and they have a support team. So if you run into a technical issue or if you are having trouble getting leads, they're there for you. So I'm a nervous Nelly. I doubt myself a lot. And so before I actually decided to jump on board with this idea, because I got excited when I first saw it and I was like, oh, I really want to do that. But then I reeled myself back in and was like, well, wait, but can you do it? And once I learned more about it, I was like, you know what? I think this is achievable even for me. So I looked into it, I talked to my husband about it, and we decided to just go for it. I got my photo booth in May, and then I had my very first event in June, and I did it for my best friend's baby shower for free, just to kind of like test the waters, see how it went, and she loved it, the guests loved it, and every single event I've done since then has been really fun. The whole time I'm doing my event, I just smile because it's just fun watching people use the photo booth. You know, it is something that's kind of interesting. I, I don't think I really realized how much people love that stuff until I did it. I just did it for fun because they had an idea at my wife's school to have a photo booth for the safe trick or treat. Like they were like, I want, they want to do that. I have lights. So mm -hmm. I was like, I'll bring the lighting and like I can be like the parents can take pictures of their kids and I'll take pictures of the kids for the yearbook. Yeah. I was like, win win for everybody. Right. The amount of people that just thought that that was the best thing ever was like mind blowing yeah. to me. Yeah. And especially in like, it's a very social media day and age. People love to update and update their life. And here's, here's a picture of my lunch today or here's me at the mall. And just, I think everyone's always loved photo booths. The big clunky ones you see in the mall, or even at Chuck E. Cheese, when you take your kids there, like you go in the photo booth to get your picture, no matter how many times you've taken your kids to Chuck E. Cheese and you keep that as a keepsake. Photo booths are just fun for some reason. Everybody loves them. And that's why I was so excited to actually get into it. My dad ha always had like Apple computers growing up, like Mac laptops. And there's this app on Mac called photo booth and I can't even tell you how many hours I used to spend on it with my friend but that's all we would do in high school we would just sit there and take funny pictures all the different filters and stuff and it was a blast 
So that's why when I saw the photo booth thing, I was like, this is something that I can really see myself doing. I think other people would really enjoy it. So I think it would be profitable. And that's why I just kind of believed in myself on this one and started it. And I haven't regretted it since. <laughs> so it's been good so far. Yeah, I mean, there's like a lot of, I think, easy, not easy ways to make money, but there are some like, they're not always that complicated, I guess you can say. Right. Like if you feel the need and it like suffices for what people are wanting, like definitely can find like your niche of group of people or whatever that is and like run with it. Yeah. And I think it's just, it is what it is. And I think the photo booth thing is one of those things. I, I kind of saw my trend with it, but I don't really see it as much as I did. So I don't know what happened yeah. with that. I don't know if you like are familiar with that, but I don't, it, like it's kind of weird. I don't know if it's just maybe here in Ocala, there's just not that many people. There's not, and that's another okay. thing I looked at before I jumped into it because, you know, I, I believe in community over competition, but I also didn't want to start a business that there was a ton of in Ocala. I didn't want to compete with some other photo booth companies. That would just, I feel like that would just be, I don't know, just not the smartest thing to do. So there is only, I believe, two other ones that I know of in Ocala. One's a 360 booth, and then one is a photo booth, I think, like mine. So I was like, okay, so there is kind of a need for it here in Ocala. And like we talked about, Ocala is getting a little bit bigger, even though like times are hard and money is tight, people are still spending a lot of money like on the big things, weddings, graduations, baby showers, things like that. And I think because they want those memories. And the cool thing about the photo booth is that helps you preserve those memories. I know a lot of people hire a photographer for weddings and things like that, and that's great, but they focus on, you know, the bride and groom. So a lot of your guests that you invite to your wedding, they're not really getting photographed because they're not the focal point. So the cool thing about the photo booth is the bride and groom can go back and look at their live gallery of all their photos and be like, oh, there's Uncle Jim, there's Aunt Sally, look how crazy they look like they're having fun. And I, again, that's just why I love it. <laughs> well, no, I think also to go back to it's like, you know, I've interviewed a couple photographers, one of them that I've interviewed is um, Brittany with the Art Photography, and she does amazing work. But that amazing work is very expensive. Yeah. Rightfully so, because it's a craft, and like she's phenomenal at it, and her, yeah. like, the level of photography that she takes is, like, top notch. And she actually has two photographers. One, like, takes it, like, hello photo lens, and they actually, like, go into the crowd of people dancing and take pictures of them. It's actually really cool, that cool. <laughs> that she does that. But yet again, it costs a lot of money, mm -hmm. and, like, honestly, like, for me, I didn't have a lot of money for my wedding. I had a photographer come in for three hours, and we did, like, rolling cameras and took pictures yeah like that's what we did because i didn't we didn't have the money or it's not even i didn't have the money i didn't want to spend the money on that let's put it that way i yeah. have a really nice honeymoon that's what i wanted yeah <laughs> so but like for me i think like the photo booth is such like a it's a great alternative to some of that photographness i you know i didn't think about doing something like that but maybe that's something we would have considered because by the time you developed all the film and we did all that stuff it was really expensive <laughs> not as much as the booth was or like yeah. i don't know what you charge for your booth yeah. but I mean, probably somewhere near that. Yeah. Because it wasn't cheap. It, yeah. it was cheaper than having the photographer, but not like that cheap. You yeah, know I think I saw like a, a Polaroid camera maybe at Walgreens or something, and I was shocked at how much it was. It was like, I want to say close to $20. And I was like, what? <laughs> I feel like back in the day, they weren't that expensive. Everyone had a Polaroid camera. My parents followed me around with one, you know, but I guess. Now it's like vintage, it, so it's expensive. Yeah, it was really expensive to get developed. We did not account for that. We just yeah. didn't think about it because we're like, I guess, I mean, I'm from the era too, like, digital, like that was cheap. Yeah, like everybody did it, like you just did it. So I, and I just didn't, I assumed that it was still that way and it's not. It's really. not, no. Like that kind of a cost, like does it affect your photo booth? Cause do you print out photos or is it a, a so gallery? I do offer prints on my most expensive package. Okay. Still, I feel like it's affordable, <laughs> but that is my, I think, probably the most costly thing that I have is like the printer paper and doing all that. And the printer itself was also expensive. And then there's the ink and things like that. But people, especially for weddings, they love the prints. And also it's tangible wedding favors that they don't have to worry about. Your guests walk out the door with a photo, they can hang it on their fridge or stick it in their car. But yeah, it is, prints are expensive. It's very expensive. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that's something people don't necessarily take account for if they did yeah. something. Did you do that something that kind of surprised you too? Yes. And at first I strongly considered not offering prints and being a digital only photo booth because I didn't think people would really want the prints as badly just because everything is so digital in today's world. The cool thing about my photo booth is you can text a photo to yourself instantly. And then as soon as you get that text message, you can download it, share it to Instagram, to Facebook. So do you really need the print? Because then again, you can always just, once it's saved to your phone, get it printed at Walgreens if you really wanted it. But my dad kind of made a good point. My dad's kind of like, he's helped me in the sense that he's more of like the, the businessman. Like I struggle with that. I'm very new to it. So if I have a question, I'm like, hey dad, like, what do I do? How do I go about this? And he kind of made the point, if you don't offer it and someone wants it, you can either say, 
you know, someone wants prints. You can either say, yes, we offer it, or no, we don't. You never want to be able to say no. You want to give your client what they want. So on the off chance, there is someone that wants the prints, you have it as an option available to them. And that's why the prints are only on you know, my gold package. And it's funny because I wasn't expecting it, but that's the one that most people want. So oh. I was wrong. No, like if people do want the prints, which is cool. <laughs> which I mean, I mean, it's good for you. Yeah, it's it is cool. I was surprised, pleasantly surprised, but I was surprised. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would have been kind of surprised about that too, honestly, because it's just not a thing that people typically care about, but I guess, it goes back to us talking about like the big comfy photo booth. So like, if that's like the vibe that you're wanting to get, mm -hmm. then I guess you would want that. Yeah. Enough of us are still around that are people that are getting married. Yeah. We, I mean, like I went to photo booth. Actually, I think I went to a photo booth recently and they didn't do prints. I think they texted it to you. Really? I think. And I was like, I just got gypped. I got gypped. <laughs> like I don't have my prints. So like I think that's partially why too. It's like maybe as the younger age group is getting married, that won't be such a thing. Maybe, I don't know. But I mean, I would want the prints. Yeah, I, there's something like nostalgic about that. Yeah, was, the, nostalgia is like the perfect word for it. And everyone, like, I think we all crave that. We want a little piece of our childhood back and the photo booth kind of gives that to you, especially with the prints, so. <laughs> yeah, I know, when you mentioned the Chuck E. Cheese thing earlier, I, I literally, like, I have a picture that's like black and white, horrible that my mom, I think still, or it's like in some like photo thing. I don't even know, yeah. but like I instantly like remember yeah. that photo. And I was like, oh God, I don't wanna think about that. <laughs> but I bet your mom treasures it. I bet oh, she does. My parents have literal boxes, <laughs> literally as big as this couch full of like pictures. Yeah. And my parents just, they took a lot of pictures. I don't know, my dad loved, had a, tons of cameras. We had like video cameras when they first came out. Like he was, my dad does computers for a living. So tech was always his like thing. So anything technical, he was all in. So there's like, he was doing selfies. It's all, of course selfies were cool. That's what he says. Like I, you know, and there's like literally like pictures of him like trying to take a picture of himself in these boxes of pictures. Your dad invented the selfie. I guess. That's what he says. He likes to claim that. It's really quite comical. I'm like, dad, I don't think that's quite how that works, but it was initial. Was it actually a selfie or not? But I kind of want to talk a little bit about how we were talking earlier that you still work at public. I do. I, Publix was my first job. Right out of high school, got a job at Publix. I was super nervous. I was a super shy kid. I didn't talk to anyone. I would not have classified myself as an extrovert at all. And I was a bagger and I hardly talked, but Publix, you know, they are customer oriented. They're all about their customer service. So they just preach it. Make sure you talk to them, you know, how you doing? Have a great day. Thanks for shopping with us. And it really forced me to get out of my little bubble. And I love Publix for that. And also, I guess I never realized how great Publix was of a place to work until I got there. Like everyone always said, oh, Publix is so great, but I never thought of making it a career until I actually started working there. They do have great benefits. You know, store managers make a lot of money and they don't have a college degree and they have a great living. And that was appealing to me because I tried the college thing. My parents are all teachers, my mom, my dad, okay. and my stepmom. Yeah. And so I was pretty much told, you're going to college. And college is great, and I tried it, it just wasn't for me. So as I'm you know, failing out of college, I'm working part-time at Publix, and they're just sitting there telling me all these great things about Publix and how much money I can make at Publix without having a college degree, and that appealed to me. And I ended up falling in love with Publix. I love that they give back to the community. I love their benefits. It was fun a lot of the time, and so I pursued it. I got full-time. I ended up being what's called a customer service team leader, which is just below assistant customer service manager, and I was just, ready ready to climb the ladder that's all i wanted was to be a public manager and then i had my son he was born with some medical issues we spent a month in the NICU with him public was great to me throughout all of that and then when he was about he had just turned one my grandma had passed from covid and yes she was my grandma so she was old but she was a young 75 year old like she wasn't if covid hadn't taken her i strongly believe she would have lived maybe to 100, like she was just in her prime, even at 75. So when she passed, it was unexpected. And not only were we devastated by her loss, but then she was my childcare. My parents, like I said, they're teachers, they still work. My husband works full time as well. I don't have any siblings, I'm an only child. So it was either stick my son in daycare, and daycare is expensive. Daycare, it would have taken my entire paycheck plus some. And so I thought, okay, I can do that and still work at Publix and pay someone to raise my son, or I can step down, work as a part-time office staff, work around everyone else's schedules, and be home with my son. 
So I did that and I've been doing it ever since and it's been fine, but I guess I just wanted more. I love being a mom. I have two, well, four kids in total. I have two step kids and then two of my own and I love being a mom. But um, I guess I just wanted, and I love working at Publix part time still, but I guess I just wanted something of my own, like something that I could grow and be proud of and just feel like, I don't want to say making a difference, but making a difference because I know I'm making a difference in raising my children to be good people, but I wanted something for myself, I guess. Yeah, no, I, think, <laughs> I know, I think I think that's true. I've had a couple of different people on here. I think actually Shannon is like kind of similar to you when it comes to that. She worked a lot of office jobs. She worked her way up. She was, you know, very, like did pretty well in, in the office space, like mm -hmm. office manager type position. And she just really got tired of like not spending any time with her kids. And so she was like, I need something else. And she was like, I've always loved to do piercing. I did piercing on myself. And like, that's just what she ended up doing. And now she's like, now I get to take my kid to Disney like on Friday because he's a kindergartner. And like, yeah. why not? Yeah. Like, she's like, why not? Like, so she really, I, I, I can't relate to that because I don't have children. And, and like, I, I play a very different role in like my relationship too. Because I am like, I, it just is what it is when you're gay. It makes things different. But like, I think there is something very special about being like entrepreneur and like being able to have that flexibility, having something that's like of your own. Cause yeah. you know, like my wife's a teacher, she's an art teacher. What are your, what are your parents? My step, it's hard, they keep changing grades on me. So Poor thing. my dad does fifth grade, my stepmom does, I want to say kindergarten and okay. my mom does first grade. They're okay, all so they're elementary. all elementary. Okay, yeah. my wife's an elementary art teacher too. So okay. they, yeah, it's, it's very stressful. Yeah. It's very stressful yeah. these days. Um, I'm glad I don't have my wife's job. Uh, yeah. I would not, would not want her job. But I will say like seeing what she has to deal with and like I couldn't imagine like us having children in the mix of it all and me if I had a different job too because originally like like I told you earlier I have a degree in dietetics and if I what my plan was is I didn't really want to spend the money during COVID to have an internship mm -hmm. like I didn't want to spend twelve thousand dollars for it to be virtual because it was during COVID yeah and I refused to spend that amount of money for a virtual internship yeah. <laughs> dietetics is very hands on it's very like you need to like be there it's help yeah. you need to be there and I just didn't want to to do that that yeah. just wasn't what my thing and so i was like what am i gonna do i spent four years of my life on a degree like and it was like everything for me like i love science i loved what i did it's still a huge passion for me that it hasn't really changed it, it's different now but it, it's still something i like and so i was gonna go into the food service realm so i would have been like working for like craft or kellogg or whatever and like doing quality control or for winn dixie or even Publix has quality control yeah. managers i would have done that position i could still do that and if i did that I, we would have like I would never see anybody ever. Yeah. Like you make a lot of money, but the amount of work that you do yeah. is ungodly. And you work on holidays. You work. Yeah. Everything. I mean, I know public says those days off, but like in the food industry and that quality control, you just work a lot. And like I couldn't imagine like dealing with like my mother-in-law has like a lot of health issues, like dealing with all that and having to yeah. like I don't know. It's just like it's a lot. Like yeah, it's too much. I think anyway. it is and money is great but it's on everything you know like I said my son was born with issues we spent a month in the NICU and I think that also scared me and I just didn't want to take anything for granted I wanted to be there for everything I never wanted to have to say sorry honey I can't make it to your soccer game because mommy has to work like I don't want to be that parent and I know some parents are and that's fine and if that works for them that's fine it's just for me it's not what I wanted I want to be there as much as I can be but also I have a business and this lets me do that so yeah no that's that's the beauty of entrepreneurship i think is that it allows you to you know have that ability to be free and to do what you want like you know like the other day i had to take my mother-in-law to the doctor mm -hmm. i was able to move my schedule around if i didn't work for myself i wouldn't be able to do that and like yeah. you know i had those conversations with her and, and i'm like just like you know the other i was like the other kids can't help like you know like Daryl's working i mean there's she can take it i mean she can take a day off kind of because she's salary so it's, it's a little and they have sick time and stuff so it's a little bit easier for her but other siblings they work hourly so there is no like yeah they're not salaried they don't get benefits like that it doesn't look like that so you know that it's something to be said about entrepreneurship and um i think any all of my podcasts most people say that a lot of, it's just <laughs> it is the beauty of it it comes with a lot of work so i think like you know we take those times off but we have to like make that time up we might be working until 10 o'clock at night the yeah. next day but like you know you can make it work you get to make your own schedule to really like take it and go the other way. I always ask, uh, we always talk kind of a little bit about social media because mm -hmm. I think in today's age, social media is such a huge way of marketing yourself, branding, like it is just kind of the all be all type thing that you have yeah. to do to push yourself out 
as an entrepreneur, especially in today's age, with you being doing photos, I feel like that kind of like feels like an unfair advantage a little bit. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I do. And it's, it's funny because like, I, as soon as I'm done with an event, I go through the live gallery and I just look at everyone's photos. I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to post that one to my Instagram. Like such a good photo. And so, yeah, I do have a lot of like perfect things to put to market myself and it's, you know, for my own photo booth. So it's great. I do spend a lot of time. What kind of reel can I make? What sound is trending? Like I never thought about these things before because I was just a mom posting photos of her kids on Instagram. I didn't really want people to see it except for my friends and family. But yeah, I never realized like how much work social media is. I do think it's important. I don't think I would be very successful at all without social media. I do spend a lot more time on Instagram than I do on Facebook. I just think for me and my business and also like the age group that seems to want my services the most, they're all on Instagram. So I focus a lot of my time on there, posting to my stories, little updates. Like I'll take a selfie and just be like, hey guys, I'm on my way to today. Come with me behind the scenes. <laughs> just like show them what I'm doing. Cause I think people kind of like they know it's a business, but then that way they also know like I'm a real person running the business and this is my life and this is what I'm doing. So social media is cool. I think it's fun. I like to have fun with it. I think I do have an advantage. <laughs> a little bit. I mean, Sorry. That's, yeah, that's why I mean I kinda of told Brittany that too. I was like, Brittany, I'm like, these are all these like awesome pictures of like beautiful weddings. Like yeah. I'd be like, I'm a real I'd be like Yes, we have nice houses, but yeah. how many nice houses do you really want to see? I'm sorry, like, once you see one new construction house, they all look the same. Yeah. Very rarely do I walk into one and I'm like, oh my god, that's a cool feature. I'm actually doing an open house this weekend, and it actually has a cool feature, and I'm like, hey, because, like, the, <laughs> the island is, like, rounded. Oh, that's cool. And so it is, it's, like, unique. You guys can't go, I'm like, I'm going into it and hit your head on the corner. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Some kids probably would. That's probably um, true. My, my kids will. Yeah. <laughs> They'll find a way to get hurt. <laughs> but it is, it's like, you know, it, it being a realtor it is sometimes it is difficult to come up with like context. So like, yeah. people don't really want to listen to me talk about like five reasons why you should buy a house. Cause like, I'm not really doing that. That's not me. It's not really what the content I make either. But like, you know, it's, it is what it is. But social media is like super, I think, important. It's something that I don't think you can be, as you, you are limiting yourself in your success if you don't try to do something with a, maybe not to a podcast extent, but to yeah. some degree of social media. Yeah, I mean, I think it's important. The podcast is a great idea. I love podcasts. I love, I'm, I'm a, I'm a true crime podcast oh, lover. Right. Although I never want to be on one of those. This is good. <laughs> no, true crime, no true crime. I am, I, my wife's best friend listens to all, like, all of the true crime. Yeah. Like, that is like her thing. She is living her best Scorpio life. Yeah. And I don't know, what are you? What I'm you a Sagittarius. You're Sagittarius. Okay. Oh, okay. So, but yeah, no, she's living her best Scorpio life. Yeah. And the true crime. <laughs> like, Sage, what are you listening to? She's like, I'm listening to murder. And I'm like, <laughs> she's like, she's like telling us this story about this one guy that like, he, uh, oh, these were sting operations and he blamed oh. his terror, uh, his like, on why he was talking to a 13 year old. It's really wild. I'm like, Sage, why is he listening to this right now? She's like, I guess what she says to I'm like, I don't know about that. But, eh. I don't know, it's just, it's, it's really, it's interesting. But I know with, with social media, I can go back to that. Uh, with videos and stuff, you know, do you now are your photos live or are they like not live? No, so it's just, okay. It's just a still photo. Oh, so it's a still photo. Whatever I post on Instagram that's like a video, it's me taking a video behind the scenes because I like people to not only see the images that they'll get by using the photo booth. Like I like my viewers on Instagram to see people having fun with the photo booth because they do have a good time with it, and so I will just be behind the photo booth taking video of people taking pictures. Because that really like portrays the experience of it instead of just knowing like here's the picture. Here's the picture. Yeah. Like, it's, I mean, <laughs> you know, Instagram's a little bit more updated than that. It used to be that with like, technology. Yeah. It's gonna have the video up there. Okay. I, was, I was just curious. Yeah. On if that was like, I don't know, with today's technology, you never know. Really know what. Yeah. Well, my photo book can do video. Oh, okay. Boomerang. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Okay. Gifts, just I don't know how to say it. Yeah. Yes, I would say gifts. That's what I say too, but someone told me I was wrong. I don't know, but that word, I can do it. And then photos, of course. So. And yeah. people have to tell you love the boomerang. They love a good boomerang. I, I personally, I think that type of stuff that is, I don't like the 3D camera. Thing. The 360? Yeah, 360. I would feel so awkward. I'm just an awkward person and I just feel like I would be like, what do I do? Like, I, where do I look? Not, <laughs> at one of the real estate events we had, they did that and I was like, I'm not doing that. Yeah. Got the tea? 
not not me. I don't really like pictures of either. Yeah, yeah, you didn't make my phone. I have, you know, I have a terrible migraine that, like, literally we were sitting there at, at the Boss Ideas event, and I, like, I got a terrible migraine, and they were like, let's go get pictures, and I was like, I normally would, but, like, those lights are gonna, like, just yeah. escalate this so much worse, so I was like, I, like, I wanted to do it, but, like, I, just, <laughs> I was, like, I just checked out after that, I was like, this is not the other Day, but okay, we're gonna go. <laughs> like my wife ended up like blowing her tire that day too. So it was oh, just no, not it, was, a day. it was just not a good day. It was just, yeah. I mean, we had to spend eight hundred dollars to put all new tires on a car we just bought. That was oh, really great. Yeah, because it's an all-wheel drive car Subaru, like a Subaru Forester. So we had to put all new wheels on it. So that's not great. <laughs> not very good. I was like, I had a closing, and I'm like, and Sarah was like, she like literally that day she had seen a me like a quote that said, um, my car can sniff when I make money. <laughs> that was that moment right there. I was like, you got so it. true. It's so yeah. true. Well, at the very end of my podcast, what I always ask everybody, um, and even if they're not an entrepreneur, honestly, I ask, um, like, what would you tell somebody that, like, if they want to do what you do, what would you tell them? What advice would you give them? Do your research. Believe in yourself. I don't want to say it's easy because it's not easy, but it's also not the most difficult thing to get into. As long as you try hard, you believe in yourself, you do your research. Find a community. The photo booth community is huge. I found this group on Facebook, um, and that's helped me a ton because you can just hop on there anytime you want and just be like, hey, like, how would I go about this? I have a client who's asking this. Um, and when you're new, I feel like it's really important to be able to have someone to, to count to lean on. In the photo booth community, it's not very competitive. They're all very, at least in my experience, everyone I've come into contact with is more than happy to help you. We're all just trying to make a living. We're all just trying to be successful. And that's one thing I really loved about it. I have always wanted to be in the event industry. I grew up watching like four weddings and say yes to the dress. And I was just convinced that I was either gonna work in a bridal shop or be an event planner. Um, but I realized that I don't have that in me. Like I'm not a fashionista and I'm not, I don't know how event planners do it. Like they are so focused. Yeah, see, I don't know how to take I, It was yeah. insane. It was beautiful. It I was, never, it was insane. I could never, and like just everything, the timing, I couldn't do it. It like, takes a very special person to be an event planner. But I still wanted to be in that industry. So that's why when I saw that ad pop up on Facebook, I was like, wait, this is great because this is something that people are going to want at their weddings, want at their baby showers. And it doesn't seem like it's that stressful. Like it's, it's just fun. So if someone's interested in the photo booth business, as long as they want to have fun, if they want to have a business that's flexible, if they want to be in the event industry without all this stress, this is like the perfect thing to get into. And I don't think it's going to be going anywhere anytime soon just because, you know, photo booths have been around for ever at Chuck E. Cheese's at the mall and people love it. They, they love to take their picture. <laughs> they love to post their pictures. So that was important to me too. I didn't want to start a business that I thought was going to decline anytime soon, but I just think it's booming right now, the event industry. Yeah, no, I think I think events and all of those things are like becoming a lot more like very trendy and very popular and what people like to do and want to do and it's just it is it's just part of the whole I guess trend of things. But I don't really see that going anywhere. I think the age group is just gonna yeah. keep that going. Maybe the younger age group might change that, but like I I think my like I'm twenty five. How old are you? Twenty nine. Okay, so you're older than me. So like I think our age group is somewhere in the middle on that. We sometimes yeah. like we we will spend the money on certain things yeah. and ixnay others. So like I would have probably, if it wasn't for family, like, I would have been okay with like eloping and spending a lot of money on a honeymoon and a, and a photographer. And we highly consider doing that and like doing some crazy, like going to some crazy place and getting married. Like 100% thought about doing that. Um, I think and that's a, a different, it's gonna be interesting to see that transition, but like your age group and I would say anybody in their thirties, most people that are having kids, getting married, maybe those large events, like they're still, there's a lot of millennials. Yeah, oh yeah. There's a lot of yeah, millennials. We're over the world. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all ain't going nowhere. No. No, we're here to stay. We're here to stay. <laughs> and, a, and a lot of them do those like the big events and stuff, I think, because like their families did that. So they yeah. do that. I think Gen Z, us, we kind of like, our parents, all of us are like, they're Xers and they just do, my parents didn't do that kind of stuff. No? No, we didn't like have big crazy events or like family reunions. Like a lot of like people that I know are a little bit older than me had like family reunions. Forget that. Like I don't know. Nevertheless, um, I think it's really well. I hope you enjoyed. I did doing this, and I think it went. I think it went well, well. And um, if you know, if you need anything, thank you. You're Thanks very for well. having me. Of course, <laughs> it's my pleasure. Thanks everybody, and check back next week for the next episode.